the city of Lagos points and dark as all Be the first to know from the north, south, east, west and around Africa. We break the news. Now you can catch all the actions live as the news breaks. We are Call TV News. Welcome to Call TV. A 24 hour news station. It's another beautiful Sunday morning we have here in Lagos. And I want to say good, good morning to you. And thank you for joining us again on Call TV News. Of course, we're talking about post-election realities in AKT State. It all started yesterday and we did lift up to expectation bringing you up-to-date event as it happened in AKT. 24th day of June, Saturday, yesterday AKT became the signature of all eyes and of course international community most importantly everyone called the Nigerian was uh, very anxious to follow what would happen and of course we have the result now it's announced already by Anik many people did not sleep last night up and following what exactly would transpire from what many observers have called a free fair and credible election of course all of our correspondents most of them yesterday gave us reports of a relatively peaceful atmosphere in AKT. We had calls too from residents uh, all across AKT yesterday, especially from the state capital, Ado AKT, showing their enthusiasm, uh, how ecstatic and how excited they were. And I can remember someone called and said, I've never voted before, but what I saw yesterday indeed has inspired me and I am now ready to vote anytime, come any day in Nigeria. Lots of commendation also came for INEC. As a matter of fact, we're asking the question whether it was not too early to say uh, huhuru or whatever it is to say in the local parlance as regards commending INEC and other stakeholders in the election. But anxiety and of course tension was high last night as AKT people await to hear the official result from INEC. Prior to that time it was um, we, we had news of jubilations on the streets of Ado AKT. People insinuating of course you can tell that party agents would have done some arithmetics to know who eventually emerged as winner. I'm persuaded also that the match between the Super Eagles of Nigeria and Bosnia Ezagovina must have calmed some nerves uh, as Nigeria brought back the hope alive winning that match 1-0 that was last night but we have the table here for you in case you missed out on our early broadcast that was very early in the morning when the result was announced by the independent national electoral commission now we have the results from the 16 local government councils right here is tearing it in the face uh, all the way from AKT let's kick start from Effort. APC, of course, All Progressives Congress, which happens to be the party of the incumbent governor, had 3,422 votes. Now, let me quickly uh, refresh your memory that this particular local government has a total number of valid uh, registered voters uh, put at 22,800. 145. Liberal Party has 358 and the People's Democratic Party with 5,335. Now, if you do the calculation to find out the total number of votes cast, you will find out that it is a far cry from the number of people of voters who initially registered in that local government and that of course um, transpired uh, that is what we saw like a ripple effect across the total number of votes cast uh, earlier before Saturday INEC told us that close to 235 uh, 255,000 uh, voters could not have access to their permanent voters cards and how all of these were impact on uh, 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 the results and how all of this will evolve in time only analysts and opinion makers can tell. Oh yeah, Kitty, very interesting election yesterday, many would say, because oh yeah, local government happens to be the local government council of the incumbent governor, Dr. Kaldi Faimi. APC put some strings there 
10,176, but not just enough. If you skip Labour Party that has 512, you see what PDP got from the governor's local government. It's 11,200. And that makes PDP as well a winner of that local government. Earlier, we told you about the politics in Oye. Of course, um, a major PDP town, no doubt. But um, many observers felt that this is a local government of the incumbent. And indeed, it, that will impact on the result. Before that, a federal government, a federal university uh, uh, was established in Oye. And the role that the incumbent governor played in ensuring that some faculties are relocated to Ikole, many believe have also impacted on the choice of the people yesterday in Oye local government. Away from there to Ileje Meje. Ileje Meje is a local government with the local government with the least number of registered voters in the 21 June 2014 governorship election in AKT, having a total number of 11,796 registered voters. And what we have as a result yesterday, 3,336 votes for the uh, incumbent party APC and the um, Labour Party 165 and PDP with 3,670. Of course, what you see there is that the PDP with a upper hand. Away from a major major to Ikere local government, 7,987 votes for the All Progressives Congress and Labour Party, of course, with 585 votes as well as PDP. And what we see there is a dramatic increase, a geometric increase from what APC got from Ikere. It's 16,197. So uh, all the political arithmetic we had before now, it looks as if um, we have to start um, writing and thinking again. Many would say that this is indeed uh, 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 the margin, for instance, many opinion makers and analysts will say it's uh, far from what uh, people thought would happen in AKT. Ikole AKT, Ikole local government is another interesting council given the support that many thought the incubate would gather uh, because of the role it played in ensuring that some faculties of the federal university moved to that local government. But it did not reflect in the vote. 8,804 for the All Progressives Congress, uh, 1,259 for Labour Party, and look what PDP had there. It's 14,238 votes. AKT Southwest, of course, followed in the same trend. APC with 6,746 votes. Labour Party with 1,413 votes. And look at what PDP had in AKT Southwest. It's 11,038 votes for the PDP. Ijero AKT. Uh, Ijero, of course, was one of those uh, local governments with high number of registered voters. As a matter of fact, 49,484 people were registered to vote in Ijero. And here is the result after accreditation. 9,348 for the All Progressives Congress, 1,554 for Labour Party and PDP there, having 13,814. Very, very strategic local government council in the Saturday, June 21 governorship election in Nekiti. Six candidates, six political candidates came from this particular uh, local government, including the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, which, of course, you know by now, in case you don't know, is the governor-elect of AKT, uh, as announced officially by INEC in the early hours of today. Irep Kodun, Ifelodun, of course, exactly where Bamidele, Opayemi Bamidele, candidate of the Labour Party, came from also. And look at what the people decided. 6,834 for the All Progressives Congress, 3,555 for the Labour Party. And then here it is again, uh, Fayashe showing that he is a true son from this particular local government. I think that reflected in the vote. 13,038 votes from Irepo Dui Felodu local government. Away from there is Emure. Emure 
4,332 for all progressives Congress and the Labour Party had its own share of 1,527 votes and look at PDP having 7,086 votes. Away from there to Ekiti East. Ekiti East, APC, uh, cut away 8,584 votes, Labour Party with 884 votes, and the um, PDP flying higher than every other political party in that uh, local government with a whooping 12,498 votes. MOBA also followed in the same trend, mm -hmm. APC 7,994 uh, votes, Labour Party has a thousand votes in Moba local government and PDP with a slight increment from what APC got, it's 8,878. Going, APC has 8,138 votes and Labour Party uh, was only able to get 714 votes in that local government and PDP showing that it indeed led it uh, 11,046 votes. Ise, APC 5,809 votes, Labour Party 600 votes, and PDP there with 10,136. Now, if you look at that, it's close to double of what the incumbent party got from Ise. Ekiti West, of course, not too far from what we've seen, uh, what we saw APC had in MOBA, as well as Ikere. It's still in the margin between seven and 8,000, and what we have here is 7,860 for the APC in Ekiti West, and 884 for the Labour Party, and 10,702. Of course, you know who the big contenders are now. It does seem... Now, if you recall the role that Idosi played in the rerun election in the 2009 governorship polls in AKT, of course, a violence-prone area during that particular election, and it also formulates a major part of what uh, formulates the court concerns as regards that particular election. And, of course, another major player uh, that we thought was a major player prior to this election was uh, the former governor of Ekiti State, engineer Shegun Oni. You recall that Shegun Oni, a few months to the election, uh, 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 cross-capitated from the People's Democratic Party to the APC. But that then seemed to reflect in the results we have here on the official INEC table. 7,134 for the APC, not too good if you compare with what PDP had, it's 13,045. Of course, Liberal Party uh, uh, was able to also get uh, 1,182, a little fraction of the election, uh, uh, the result in Idosi. Now, the big one is Adoikiti. We told you yesterday that Adoikiti had a whooping number, where is it now, of registered voters in Adoikiti. It was 134,141 registered voters for Adoikiti, and it was obvious that whoever won Adoikiti has a good chance to win the election. But what we saw as a result, many believe is a great surprise, and it will formulate the subject of discussion for quite a number, for quite a long time, how people in Adoikiti decided. You recall that the incumbent governor had, uh, uh, had, had said talked about the infrastructural development at the state capital, how it brought in the CCTV cameras, the roads and all of that. But then the PDP candidate said, and he was dramatic about it when he said he was the initiator of um, civilization in the Ado metropolis, that he was actually the first governor to construct a dualized road in AKT state. And he said that he kick-started development and whatever the incumbent governor did was just a follow-up. I think that became obvious in the outcome of the election in Adoikiti. APC with 13,992 votes. Labour Party had a little fraction, 2,065. But look at what PDP got from the state capital. 
It's um, unbelievable. It's 41,169. If you ask me, I believe that was what broke the cameras back. Now, let me have my seat so that I can bring you more detailed information about what many have now regarded to as being a great, great, great surprise as regards election in Nigeria. Much talked about Saturday, 21 June 2014, but now it's about finding out what transpired yesterday. The results staring us in the face. It's all winner takes it all for the People's Democratic Party. And you recall the all the rallies and the campaigns that kick-started, that preceded the election in AKT. Mr. President was there, Vice President was there. And Mr. President actually said something very interesting when he said he would love to come back in the next two years to inaugurate uh, a project to, you know, stamp good works in Nikiti. Many have said that would be the first time that Mr. President was going to give Nigerians a uh, 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 a glimpse of his plans to come back in 2015. The total vote cast, of course, we told you earlier yesterday that there were over 700 100,000 registered voters in AKT. But a um, few hours to election, IDEC said that 255,296 registered people did not get their permanent voters' cards. And so there were just 476,000. 870 permanent voters' cards that were distributed, and that formulated 64.98 percentage of the permanent voters' cards. So what we saw yesterday, now if you put that side by side with the permanent voters' cards that were distributed, you would notice that only 350,000 256 votes were cast yesterday. Not a far cry, 356,000, uh, you deduct that for, from 476,000, and then probably you'll be looking at, you'll be asking question, what happened to uh, the about um, 100,000 voters who got their permanent voters' cards. Why and what were those factors that delayed or that, uh, that affected the participation in that election? But not too bad, 64.98 percentage of the permanent voters' cards. I mean, we're talking about 476,870 people who were validated uh, by the umpire, INEC, and they were ready to go to vote. Now, if you look at the total votes cast and the percentage that these contenders have, the winner, the governor-elect of AKT, former governor Ayodele Fayashe, had 203,090 votes in the election that held across the 16 local government councils in AKT yesterday, and that represented 57.9% of the total vote cast. And fire me, the incumbent, now the margin uh, is what many believe to have amazed all, and that will forever remain a talking point in the political history of Nigeria. The incumbent governor had 120,433 votes that represent 34% of the broadcast. I understand I have a call now from Oshun Oloyede Adiremi. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Core TV News. How are you today? Uh, I think uh, we should compensate, uh, we should congratulate uh, Fayoshe for winning the election in the Kiki State. Okay. Pl so that's what my comment. They should, con they should congratulate him for winning the election. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adeyemi, for calling from Oshun. Good to hear from you. The phone line is 
on your screen. We'd love to hear from you as we begin to analyze um, what transpired before, during, and after the election. The big question now on the lips of many would be, how does the outcome of the AKT election impact on the forthcoming one in Oshun State and ultimately on the general election forthcoming in 2015? Congratulations, jubilations for some parties. And um, of course, you heard him from Oshun uh, commanding and congratulating the winner of that election. Now, I was telling you about the percentage distribution of the election in Ekiti yesterday, and of course, Bamidili Okpayemi, the Labour Party candidate, had 18,135 votes, and that represented 5.2% of the total vote cast. Of course, um, the, 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 the atmosphere that the people of Ekiti experienced yesterday, many have judged to be a uh, no doubt improvement on the performance of INIC as we get electoral matters. But some some people also are talking about not only the pros but the cons of the election. And that one would take us a little bit back to find out what transpired before the election and as well as during the election. But let me quickly intimate you with who the governor elect of AKT is now. We're talking about someone who was once a governor in AKT that was between 2003 and 2006. Actually, Ayodele Fayoshe was impeached on August 16, 2006 by the State House of Assembly. Is presently, of course, some say. Uh, I have a call from Patrick. Patrick is calling from Maba. How are you today? Hi. Welcome on Call TV News. Please go ahead with your contribution. Okay. I only want to confirm that let's talk about our armed forces and police. All the security agents for the work they did today. Because this election that stood yesterday, I've never seen such thing before. Hey, look what they did. Stood yesterday, I never seen before. And the uh, work present show up. Because what you see yesterday will show up that uh, because. This kind of security that have not been used before. When you see city governor bringing out the whole local government because they have the chance to do anything in life. But yesterday, even the incumbent governor himself confirming that every atmosphere is good, is okay. Mm -hmm. Even when I saw him, he said that if this is, if what he saw there is transferring other places, it's like the everywhere is okay. So I congratulate, first of all, let me congratulate the fire for winning the election. Yeah. That way, I'm just told that they uh, could be going, but what, has, what I see is they were transparent and okay. I'll say that they should keep it up. Next election, you know, I want this kind of security to beef up more. Let us have free and fair election for Nigeria for what? Thank you. Have a nice day. Hold on. Before you go, Patrick, are you there? Hello? Patrick, are you there? Oh, I'm afraid I lost that. I was going to ask you if we uh, channel the same military resources to Oshun. What happens in 2015 yeah. when we won't have um, the luxury of Ooh, military I might to display when uh, we'll be talking about a general election across the 36 states in Nigeria? Have another caller. Oh, Patrick, are you still there? Hello? Oh, I'm afraid I lost that. But then we also need to analyze certain things. Of course, I was telling you about the government elect of Ikiti State, born on 13 November 1960. And um, he was governor of Ikiti State from 29th of May 2003 and 16 October. Okay, I said August earlier. It's 16 October 2006. Fayashe grew up in Ibadan, or your state, where he attended Olivet Baptist High School. And uh, many believe that he conducted one of the most sought after medical programs during his political campaign in 2001. And don't forget that he still has a case 
in court to answer. And that uh, has sparked a lot of um, reactions on the show yesterday when I had Gola over and who touched them, um, who touched on the fracas that occurred between Fireshay and former president that didn't seem to go well with a lot of colors. Hello, I have Mustafa Hello, from Lagos. Yeah, How are you today? Morning. Good morning. I just want to congratulate the new elected governor. The most important thing about our election is that we, the, the leaders have to know how to capture the youth, mm. how to capture his people. We could remember the previous time when Kyoto was there. He knows how to meet talk with the people. He mingle with the people. He didn't say it for his entire year. Everybody should bow down for him. He mingle with people, and that counts a lot. He is not like a leader that to be here that wants everybody to come and bow down for him. People don't just don't forget easily what you have done. I believe that really work for him this time around. And I really congratulate him. Hello, Thank Mustafa. You. Are you there? Oh my. I lost that. I was looking forward to have a little chat with my callers on the show today. And um, I, I would love to hear from you what you think this potents for our uh, elect electoral reforms, ongoing electoral reforms, and of course, as we begin to forecast for the next one, you recall that many have called this AKT election a litmus test for INEC as we count down to the 2015 general election. There seem to be a lot of commendation coming for INEC and as well for the military, but that's where we have to exercise a little bit of caution. Are we saying that um, it will continue to be a culture and a style for us in Nigeria to militarize our elections? And how exactly will this work for us? Because you recall that um, there were allegations uh, from the All Progressives Congress. Just before that, let me take this call. Hello, Aki. Hello, yeah. Where are you calling from, Inikiti? I just want to congratulate our new executive governor. I'm calling from Ekiti. Okay, okay. Go ahead. I can go ahead. I'm with you. All right. You see, the election is so free and fair. It's the best election so far in the history of Nigeria. Election so far in the history of Nigeria. Aki, are you saying is a better election than the 1993 I'm telling you, election? You, I'm, telling you, I'm telling you, I'm part and part of those that voted. Mm. Are you there? So, the people of Egypt have spoken, and God has answered us. We give glory to the God, of God Almighty. It's all right. Thank you very much for calling, Aki. My regards to everyone there with you in, in, in Ekiti. All right, let's move on from there. The number is on your screen. We'd we'll love to hear from you and we'd we'll love to uh, know what your comments are as regards the gubernatorial polls in Ekiti that was held yesterday. Of course, the results came in, in the very early hours of today. And of course, you add Alilu Pai, the uh, electoral commissioner, resident electoral commissioner of Ekiti State, when he announced um, uh, fire, fire shade. Okay, now I'm not going to make any funny mistake here. Of course, when he announced the former governor of Ekiti, Ayodele Fire Shea as the governor elect. I was telling you earlier about Fire Shea, how about he grew up in Ibadan and he attended Olivet Baptist High School. Of course, uh, many have said he conducted one of the most sought after medical programs during his political campaign. But let me quickly intimate you with um, those who have been the governors of Ekiti uh, since inception after this call. Hello, buddy. Hello. Good morning and welcome to Core TV News. Uh, good morning. How are you today? Um, I just want to make a comment concerning this uh, election. Um, I want to give this video to advise the opposite governor, uh, Amos and uh, Papa Oshoba, mm. uh, that they should, they should see what happened in the city. They should think well and they talk what they have between each other. If not, other parties will take off their, their, their thing away. Because what happened in the city, everybody sees 
I've never seen my last year they want to go to an election and uh, uh, other party or incumbent uh, uh, federal government to take the, the, all the judges to go and arrest people. Why? I've never seen that kind of thing in my life. It's mm. very, 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 very bad. So I'm using this, this opportunity to advise to seek governor. Amoso and the Papa Oshoba to sit down together and see what happens in me so that they will not know they are. They will not know the, the, the open state, the this coming election. Everybody knows. Everybody sees what happens. Everybody knows. And the, everybody knows that the equipment, our, I mean our president, they use their power to, 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 to take people that mandate uh, the, uh, the, the governor to, for, for their own party. Thank you very much. Sarah, thank you very much for calling Bade. Thank you for your for your call. And um, Bade, of course, is saying that um, other APC governors should take a cue from what happened in AKT and find out what lessons to learn from it. And uh, some also have been talking about what a win for PDP in AKT means for southwestern Nigeria, politics in southwestern Nigeria, what it means for the PDP in 2015. Now, if you ask many political analysts, they will tell you it's a boost in the morale of the ruling PDP, who for the first time, you know, in the history of Nigeria has a major opposition. You recall the measure that transpired late last year uh, between the ACN, the CPC, the ANPP, and some parts of APGA in Imo State. And that indeed has made APC a formidable opposition. And some are even saying that Nigeria politically is moving towards a two party system and um, hands fingers are crossed and watching what will happen in the next general election even did pdp would have to uh, uh, have a fight for its money but um, what, what, we're still watching how all of this would unfold but my last caller by day indeed made mention of arrests being made yesterday in akt and that allegation is also coming from uh, the All Progressives Congress, who alleged that 23 APC leaders, as well as journalists, were arrested by the military in AKT yesterday. We had a similar situation. I'm going to tell you that after this call. Hello, Bello. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Bello. Please go ahead with the good contribution. Morning. Go ahead with your contribution, Bello. Good morning. I'm with you. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. I give kudos to uh, INEC. Yeah. I give kudos to INEC for conducting the AKT election yesterday. Okay. Uh, it's very free and fair election. Um, I want the Lagos people to emulate some the people of the country. But they decided yesterday because. So leaders that are doing party for his people will not get back to their people. So I want to go to emulate from this election how they conduct it and how people they are to the people the government in power. So I thank the people and I congratulate the Ayodhya for being elected as the people, uh, incoming uh, governor. As the governor elect. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling Belo. Good to hear from you. The number is right there on your screen. We'll love to hear from you too as we begin to analyze post-election realities in AKT right here on Cool TV News, your number one political channel. And um, you, I, I was talking about um, the arrest made by the military in AKT earlier before that call. Of course, one of our correspondents in AKT had a similar challenge yesterday. Yesterday, Abiel Accord and told us that they could not move from where they are to monitor electoral processes in another polling unit because certain mobile policemen are at 
told them that there was no movement between a particular period of time. I think it was between two and five. And of course, all of these challenges, all of those little challenges here and there are issues that will firmly discussion subsequently. We have another caller, Dasuki from Oshobo. How are you today? Hello, Dasuki. How are you today? I'm fine. Good morning. Morning. Please go ahead with the contribution. Well, we thank we gave the kudos to the security executives. They tried their best. Oh, we lost that call. Please do try to call us back, Dasuki, uh, if you can. And we we'll also would want to analyze and find out the factors that made this election relatively peaceful compared to other ones in the past, especially when we had a major disaster in Anambra, coupled with one of an, uh, the INEC officials compromising the standards of an umpire. We'll also look into the pros and the cons of um, militar um, militarizing elections in Nigeria if Ekiti election was relatively peaceful because of the presence of a massive, because of the massive military presence, what happens for us in 2015 when we will have to conduct elections in more than one state in Nigeria? We have another call. This is Shegun. Hello, Shegun. Hello. Good morning, Shegun. Hello. Good morning, I can hear you, Shegun. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, good morning. How are you? How are you doing? I'm terrific. Go ahead with the contribution, Shegun. Okay. I I want to make a contribution concerning the election. I want to make a contribution concerning the election that was held in the yesterday. Actually, I'm going to give I'm going to congratulate the winner so far. But notwithstanding, I want to tell you that there is danger that there is danger in this type of election we are holding in this country. If we commit the militarized election like this, if we are talking about events that have happened some few days ago in the country, they could not mobilize the military and the police, whatever the agency, to have this authority. But they could want they could do that one just because they want to get the candidate in food. And moreover, I usually ask my my a question that if somebody has a case on bordering on his leg concerning corruption, don't let us forget quickly that this so-called being uh, the governor elect now had an issue with his uh, with him or uh, with ESCC and ICPC. I have one contested and I do feel certain form where I was being asked that have you had any case in court or any corruption case burden on you? How did he manage to fill such area when he's having a case burden on him? I'm not a sympathy to ACC neither, but I'm sympathy to the situation in the country. They do a die, die a fear of, a, of people at the end of our fear. And the event that has tried, the, the event that has come earlier before this time, regarding how some people could come a day, 24 hours prior to the election, and they were being held hostage by the military. Please, I do want to tell you that if care is not taken, election in 2015 will be rigged across against the wish and the can and the vote of the people. Thank you very much. Shegun, before you go, are you suggesting that the elections in AKT was rigged? I'm afraid I lost that. Okay, but he made mention of um, Ayodele Fayoshi, who is the Gado elect, being uh, someone who has the case with the AFCC and the ICPC. I'm not a legal practitioner, but I think lawyers will tell you that uh, the fact that he's not convicted yet doesn't make him guilty. He might have been accused of one offense or the other, but it would take a recognized court in Nigeria to convict him and declare him uh, guilty or innocent and only time would tell as all of this but then well fortunately or unfortunately the moment he becomes a governor don't forget about the immunity class he becomes immune against all of these corrupt charges levied against him we have another hello? call this is from Ibado hello Emmanuel yeah good morning Morning, Emmanuel. How are you today? Fine. Please go ahead with your contribution. 
Yes, I want to congratulate the uh, Ireland Fire Chief. Okay. Hello. I'm with you. Go ahead. Yeah, I want to congratulate the Ireland Fire Chief for being the governor of that city state. Hello. Go ahead. I'm with you, Emmanuel. Yeah, but I just want to tell the other governors in other states that this should serve as an example for them that they were governed the the, the, the less privilege in their state. Mm. The less privilege in their state. In their state. Those are the people that make Ayodhya Fire become a government. Because he has been the friend to the masses. Hello, go ahead. I'm with you. Go ahead. So that is that's it. It's all right. But, okay, what are your feelings, Emmanuel? How do you think this election will impact on the next one in Osho? Okay, that's where. Are you still there? Oh, I'm afraid we lost that call. Well, thank you for your call. The number is flashing on your screen. Please endeavor to call and let's find your view and your, let's know your view and your opinion as regards the election in AKT, the just concluded election in AKT State. One of our callers also referred to one of the challenges that rocked the pre-election period in AKT. You recall that um, the incumbent party in AKT, the All Progressives Congress organized a mega rally a, a day before the 24 hours notice before, prior to election elapsed and some governors, uh, the governor of Edo, the governor of Rivers were not allowed to uh, uh, go to AKT and if something happened while they were on transit and of course that also is another major issue that many are talking about but i asked a guest on the show yesterday what impact the presence of these governors would have made at that last rally could it have improved in the uh the the response of the people could it have improved the chances of the all progressives congress winning the election in that state all of these issues indeed are going to formulate analyses and debate across the country subsequently. We have another caller. This is Yomi from Adoikiti. How are you today, Hello. Yomi? Hello. Hello, Yomi. Good morning. I'm calling from Adoikiti. Good to hear from you. Welcome I to Court TV News. I'm calling from Adoikiti. Go ahead with your contribution, please. My contributions are I commend the, uh, uh, the position of the, the politics, the political politics in AKT for their uh, peaceful resolution of the conflict uh, about to be raised and the pre election period. So they, they, they did this just a letter to the other, um, the other states in the course of their distance with the less privilege in the state. Mm. So the. the oh. I'm afraid we lost that. Keep trying, keep trying. One, another, an, another great kudos coming for INEC is the idea that electoral materials got to almost all polling units at the right time. We got reports yesterday, amazingly, that accreditation started as early as 8 o'clock and ended at 12. And in some places, elections started at exactly half past 12. And we heard from the big contenders as well. We heard from the incumbent governor. We heard from the PDB candidate as well as the Labour Party candidate, who all acclaimed the fact that everything was going smoothly. As a matter of fact, the incumbent governor said that if what he saw in Isho AKT, his own primary constituency, his own home base, I mean hometown, if what he saw was to be a reflection of what is happening or what happened across AKT yesterday, then he would really, really commend INEC for doing a good job. And many have said that INEC seem to have learned his lessons from Anambra. Almost all of the elections that have been held 
prior to this time have been rocked by uh, many logistic challenges. It is either materials, electoral materials did not um, arrive at the uh, proper time or uh, one thing is missing somewhere or people's names were not found on the register. Of course, there were pockets of complaints here and there. The APC alleging that certain names of their members were not found on the register. And much, much important than that is what many have called the disenfranchisement of some prospective voters. We told you yesterday that over 700,000 people registered to vote in AKT, but just um, about 400,000 people, as a matter of fact, 476,870 eventually had access to their permanent voters' cards. What happened to the voter, the permanent voters' cards of 255,296 voters are still questions that need to be answered. We have another call. It's Joseph from Badagri. How are you today? Welcome, Joseph. Go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, good morning, sir. Morning. Yeah, I want to congratulate the Ayo Fire Chief. And although I'm not a CTV member, I'm an APC member, but I just congratulate her for the good people of the APC people. So it's all right. Good for her. Because what, when was there before, we know what is due for all of them. And the bus, bus and no people with drivers, and uh, we see all, uh, most, most of uh, their bus in Lagos City. So that's the kind of governor we want. So I just congratulate him. But I'm not a PDP member, I'm an APC member. I just, I just welcome him to the, the post. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for calling, Joseph. And the question still remains that what exactly were the factors that worked for Ayodhili Fayashi and the PDP in Ekiti State? Was it the popularity of the candidate? Was it the political structure of his party? Was it the federal might and all of that? These are questions that only, only will be answered in time. And a lot of congratulatory messages pouring in from our four lines to the governor-elect of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayashe, a former governor of that state that was between 2003 and 2006. Let me quickly intimate you with the historical uh, background of this um, great state called Ekiti, the fountain of knowledge. Of course, it was created in 1996 and um, Ekiti State had nine governors thus far in its, um, let me calculate now, four uh, in its eight years of existence, I suppose, and of course, um, the first the first two administration was under the military rule. That was before 1999. There were two military administrators. There was Mohammed Bawa and Navy Captain Atonda Yusuf, who were in charge of affairs of that state between 1996 and 1999. And when it was 1999, you all know the democratic history of Nigeria. May 29, it was the uh, alliance of democracy, the political parties that fielded and won the governorship seat in AKT. And it was time for Otumba Adeni Adebayo to rule that particular state between 1999 and 2003. And that kicks that the democratic history uh, 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 and, and the race for governorship and who sits as governor of Ekiti State. And that history is what is still being written. One was just written yesterday by the hands, the very hands of the highly okay. informed and highly educated people of AKT. I'm going to tell you more about that shortly. I have a call now from James. James is calling from Oye Kitty. Yoko, Hello. how are you today? Are you there, James? I'm, I'm there, I'm there. The, the election was free and fair. We, we went around the... <clears throat> Hello? I'm with you. What's the mood yeah. like the, now the in Oye? Oh, yeah. uh, despite that, uh, we vote for, most of us vote for, I believe, uh, in despite of the militarized, the, the, the things that uh, the former governor has been doing. I'm afraid we lost that. 
Oh, please do call us again and let's find out what the mood is like in your state. If you're calling us from AKT, just um, try to give us a leading situation report about what the feeling of the people is like, what the security situation is like in your area and your opinion about the election in that state. And it's amazing also to know how united Nigerians became when we talk about election in the southwestern state. We had calls from across northern Nigeria yesterday, Kaduna, Ademawa, Abuja, and everyone saying and talking passionately about what they think should happen and the electoral reforms that should be instituted as regards elections in Nigeria. I was telling you about the history of um, governors in AKT. It kick-started with uh, Mohammed Bawa, Navy Captain Atoda Yusuf. That was between 1996 and 1999. And Otumba Adeniye Adebayo became the very first civilian governor on May 29, 1999. That spanned all the way to 2003. It it was 2003 that the very popular Ayodele Fayoshe won his first election as governor of AKT. And if you were conversant with his administration, he was indeed popular with the people. We have cases when Fayoshe would come down of his convoy and help an elderly woman carry a load. Those were the things that some say have brought him close to the masses, Okada riders, and other people Hello? in AKT. We have another call now it's young how are you today hello how are you today young hello hello i can hear you how are you today i am fine i'm fine go ahead with your contribution please okay my contribution first i am congratulating on your finances mm. for being returned as the next governor of the state hello I'm with you. I'm with you. Yes. Then uh, I am. Hello? Are you with me? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Please go ahead. Okay. Oh, come on. I was hearing you young. I wonder why you hung up. Please, if you can reach us again do so we'll be here to hear from you we also want to have your opinion about how you think this particular result will impact on the next election in Oshun state and ultimately on the 2015 general elections now you will recall that much has been talked about uh, election holding in northeastern states of Nigeria presently under the threat of terrorism, Adama, Yobe and Yola and stakeholders in that state, Northern Governors Forum as well as um, governors of that state, uh, 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 stakeholders, the Elder Forum, Northern Elder Forum saying that if election could hold in Afghanistan then why Defend, uh, disenfranchise the people of northeastern Nigeria. Why rob them of their right to go out to the polls and cast their vote? Now, how all of that would turn out, of course, it looks like INEC is showing us green light in that direction that elections will hold. How it will turn out in 2015, only time will tell. After Fayoshe, I told you earlier, the Fayoshe became the governor of Egiti in 2003, and um, that kept going till October 16, 2006, when he was impeached by the State House of Assembly. There was a brief replacement by Chief Friday, the Speaker of the House, Friday Adiremi. That then last for too long when federal government declared that illegal and declared a state of emergency in that state. Afterwards, it was a military administrator. It was a real occurrence of what was obtainable between 1996 and 1999. And we had um, General Tunji Oluri, and he became the administrator of Ekiti State between 19 October 2006 and 27 April 2007. Afterwards, there was an acting governor, and I'll let you know who the acting governor is or was shortly after this call. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. How are you today, Yummy? Uh, I'm fine. What's the mood like in Adoekiti? The atmosphere was peaceful and was, it was calm. The, the presence of the security make the, the voting yesterday a successful one. Mm. And mostly, the, I commend the effort of the 
the security agencies, especially the Nigerian Army, for what they did yesterday. Because people that were supposed to participate in this movement yesterday were apprehended dead. But people who took the Nigerian military men, they got their. Oh boy. I'm afraid we lost that. I was going to ask you if, in your opinion, you think the presence of the military in Nikiti did not affect the uh, response of the people, did not affect um, how people came all out. Because from what we saw in this digits, 3,000, 4,706, 4,700, what am I saying? 476,870 uh, voter cards were distributed, I beg your pardon. And um, out of all of that, only 350,256 votes were cast. And so we are wondering what happened to the about 106,000 voters that had their permanent cards, their permanent voter cards, what would have influenced that? Well, let's move away from there. I was telling you about the uh, uh, past governors of Ikiti. There's been nine of them, and uh, in October this year, no doubt we're going to have the 10th governor of Ikiti. I have another caller, and this is Okocha from Lagos. How are you today, Okocha? Hello? I think I lost that. Please try again. Keep trying. Don't stop trying. If you can reach us over the line, you know how you can reach us on our social media feeds, Facebook, Twitter, as well as YouTube. Now, Facebook, it's www.facebook.com forward slash call. TV news and you can also follow us on our Twitter handle at Core TV news NG. It's trending live on YouTube in case um, Nepa takes the light wherever you are right now. PHC and sees the light you can you, you can you can stream it live on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash Core TV live space and news. Now after the tenor uh, after the administrator General Tunji Oluri in 2007. Oh, I have another caller. Hello, Taslim. Hello, Taslim. Hello. How are you today? Hello. Happy Sunday to you, Taslim. Welcome. Yeah. How are you today? I'm okay. Please go ahead with the contribution. Uh, the only thing I want to say is that he was able to. Hello? I'm with you. Uh -huh. I, I said that our government was able to parade all those military men and police. And was unable to parade them to bring past those guys adopted by the Boko Haram. <laughs> Why is this so? Because of only one person to have to, to, to become a government in one city. They mobilized the number of those. They need to have police to that place. And they can't mobilize to those uh, people, those guys, abducted. Why? It's all fear. It's all fear. I think uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, the very one should, at least they should look into that uh, uh, abnormal. It's not only so fear. And uh, moreover, the, 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 the government led. It's even, it's, it's one of those people that you have to kill to hunger. Why? We are correcting corruption. It is, it is very, very not good for this country. Thank you. Just before you go, Taslim, are you there? Oh, <laughs> he's left ready. It's a right some bit of um, anger and bitterness as regards um, the militarization of election in AKT. And this is not the first time we're hearing the question. Before Taslim called, we've also had several other callers yesterday who asked the question that if we had 
12,000 policemen in Nikiti. In addition to those who have already been stationed there, and we have thousands of members of the NSCDC. And of course, we're talking about um, numerous number of members of the Nigerian army. What happens to Sambisa? What happens to the three northern states on the emergency rule? But you agree with me that the Nigerian military is also there, heavily present there, doing doing what what doing their best, I suppose. And it would be, I stand to be corrected, it would be unfair to compare fight against terrorism with mining elections. I have another caller, Yemi. How are you today, Yemi? I'm good, good morning. Hello, Yemi. Hello, hello, good morning. Good morning, how are you today? I'm good, and you? I'm hello. terrific. Go ahead with your contribution. I'm good, sir. Good. I, I thought, but I just want to congratulate Firezen and people from AKT. Mm. Oh. I'm afraid I lost that. Please um, turn down the volume of your re uh, of your television set when you're calling. We really appreciate that so that we can do without the feedback distortion. Okay. After Fireshi was impeached in 2006, it was General Tunji Oluri Stone uh, to be the military administrator in that place. And um, shortly after that, we had an acting governor in the name of Chief Tokme Ademiluyi. And that was between 27th of April. 2007 to 29th May 2007. Now, I mean, that was very, very short, just like a month. And I believe that was just a transition period for the next election. And this election, after this very short period of acting as a governor, was going to become one of the most controversial elections in the history of Nigeria. I'll tell you more of, of that, more about that after this call. I have a caller now. Biodun, how are you today? Hello, Biodun. Good morning, my name is Biodun. Welcome, Biodun. Please go ahead with the contribution. My name is Biodun. Biodun, calling from Adegi. How is Ado today? I really congratulate Mr. Fayezi as our governor for his He's fine, he's fine. He's fine. He's fine. Everything is peacefully. And everything is peacefully. And we really enjoy. And that's the one that we want. He's the man that can do everything that we want in this city. It's all right. Thank you for calling. I'm afraid that your TV set was on. Uh, we'll appreciate if you can turn it down when you're calling us so that we can have that echo. Now, away from that, let's um, go ahead with this very interesting uh, history of governors in Negiti after the very short period of time that Tokwe Ademilui was an acting governor in Nikiti, there was a major election that, of course, raised a lot of dust and that wasn't won entirely uh, during the polls, but in the court. And um, that, of course, was the first time that engineer Shegun Unin, as well as um, the incumbent governor of Ikiti State now, Dr. Kadi Faimi, were going to contest together. And uh, that election brought uh, Engineer Oni as governor in 2007. And, and, and there was a court battle as we get the credibility of that election. There was a rerun in 2009 after the rerun. And just before that, uh, let, let me refresh your memory about the drama that transpired uh, with the resident electoral commissioner in Nikiti as at that time a 74-year-old Adebayo, uh, Ayoka Adebayo, who many people refer to as Madam Conscience, who actually uh, alleged that the result she has was doctored and her conscience wouldn't allow her 
to read it. As a matter of fact, it got to a point that the wreck disappeared and there were other stories that she was sick. But after every, every of that chapter of drama, the result still was announced and Engineer Shagoni became, uh, uh, was declared the winner again after the rerun election in 2009. But um, Dr. Cardi Faimi didn't give up. It was from one court to the other, lost at the tribunal appealed again and the, the final judgment came in a lorry and it says that Kyrie Faimi indeed was the winner of that election and that was how Faimi became governor since 2009 and that is why elections did not hold in AKT in 2011. That's why we're having the gubernatorial election in 2014. And there's been much talk about the impact of these on the quality of politics and the quality of leadership we have in Nigeria. The fact that elections are won in cuts rather than at the polls. The same thing happened in Edo, Ikiti, I mean, in Edo State. I mean, my system is full of Ikiti now. The same thing happened in Edo. The same thing happened in Kwara, in Anambra, in Osho, you know, and several other places in Nigeria. And that indeed has distorted the calendar of elections. Well, some will tell you that it's um, a blessing in disguise because the level of military presence that we enjoyed in Nikita yesterday wouldn't have been available if the elections were to hold in 2015. I mean, we won't have the luxury of machinery, the luxury of personnel to take all the way from Abuja to Ekiti State. But how that truly impacts on the quality of leadership that is experienced in those states is another thought, a uh, food for thought, because many will tell you that um, kit courses in Nigeria today are very expensive, and then you begin to look at how much of time, how much of money, how much of energy would have gone into running a case in the courts, how that would impact on the psychology of the man who is now being declared as the winner, how much structures in place, which has also appeared to be a big problem in Nigeria, the problem of con continuity in governance. A governor comes to power and then he neglects all the uh, uh, preceding structures that have been on ground for a while and it starts building all over again. How that affects the speed of governance, how it affects the quality of governance are also issues that have been discussed and that will formulate uh, uh, analysis subsequently as the days unfold. And that election is what has shaped the destiny of AKT. And just yesterday, it was time again to go to the polls for AKT people. AKT people, many believe, have produced the highest number of professors in Nigeria, and they are regarded too as a very a highly informed and highly educated people who knows the difference between their right and their left and who are well aware about what they want and how they want it. Unfortunately, the last election before now did not show too much of um, the intellectual prowess of the AKT people because of the violence that rocked certain local governments or yeah, Ikiti, Ido, Si, and you'll recall uh, that we showed you in one of our programs here on Core TV News about a jungle justice that happened recently in Ikere, Ikiti, where some people are uh, lynched and burnt a suspected kidnapper. I think I have a call, and Okocha is back from Lagos. Hello, Okocha, how are you today? I'm fine. Uh, how are you too? I'm terrific. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, I just want to congratulate uh, the elected governor, Ayo Fayo Shiri. Okay. I'm so very happy with him because we all watch the way the election moves and we can see everything moves successfully. Mm -hmm. It's a very free and fair election. We can, we can witness many people calling from OGT are saying the same thing. So we just... Like uh, the governor's been delayed for not coming to GD, I think it's the best thing. You cannot be relying on looking at the big people where that things will be going wrong, wrongly. So I just congratulate.
congratulate them. Okocha, what do you Thank think you. was wrong Thank to you. have APC you. governors in the kitty for the mega rally? Are you still there? Okay, I'm afraid I lost that. Well, <laughs> different opinions, uh, different strokes for different folks and people analyzing and bearing their minds on what happened and transpired in Nikiti. The good news for many Nigerians is that they are encouraged. They, 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 feel, they feel more like it. And uh, many are saying that this might impact positively on the next election with the reaction of people and how people will respond and come out to exercise the franchise especially in voting their choice in forthcoming election we all are still basking in our 15 years of uninterrupted democracy in nigeria a government of the people for the people most importantly by the people that's the beauty of what we saw in Nikiti yesterday they people coming out to exercise their rights people coming out to show that yes power has returned to the grassroots and i think that this must be a clarion call to every every political okay, leader in nigeria we have a call now from wisdom wisdom is calling from edo how are you today yeah good morning i'm fine thank you where are you calling from in edo i'm calling from ekuma edo state how is ekuma today Ekuma. Thank you. Please go ahead with the contribution. Oh my. Oh my. I lost that. Call us back, please. Wisdom would love to hear from you and find out what the mood like is in Ekuma. Isn't it amazing that across Nigeria, from the north to the south, east and west, people are indeed engaged. People are indeed proactive. People are aware about what's happening. People are watching people are interested and 2014 indeed is a historic year for Nigeria a hundred years after the amalgamation of the southern and the uh, northern protectorates well, it's called the centenary year. we have a call now from Adi hello Adi hello good morning Adi oh good afternoon Adi, rather are you there I'm dear can you hear me I can hear you crystal clear. Please go ahead with your contribution. I just want to congratulate the elected governor of the uh, state. He is indeed a rugged man. Uh, we all uh, say he's welcome back on board. But the issue is this. APC states now should learn from what has happened in the KP. I want to believe that they have seen how the election was conducted, even though I don't want to believe that the election was manipulated in one way or the other. All I just want to say is that uh, they should learn too from what they have seen. If there has been a mistake, if there have been in irregularities in one way or the other, we may not know that we are not in Ado. We are only, uh, we, we only take our own assumption of what we hear people saying. In one way or the other, there must always be, uh, how do you call it, reflection of power from above, whether you like it or not. But I just want to say, BDB has done and they have done well. They have really played their game well. If this is what you should learn how Thank you very much for your call. It's good to hear from you. And uh, very shortly, I'm sure that we will be hearing from one of our correspondents who is in Adoi Kiti as everyone is eating to hear the reaction of the incubant governor as well as the position of the All Progressives Congress as regards the conduct of the gubernatorial polls in Nikiti yesterday. I was telling you earlier about how historic Nigeria, uh, how historic 2014 is for Nigeria. It's our year of centenary, 100 years after the amalgamation of the southern and northern protectorates and many have referred to the to 
to the conference, is it the Belgium conference in um, 1884, and many as the Berlin conference in, in 1884, uh, where certain white men sat on the table and um, just from the map of Africa distributed it in line with the resources there and what they would want from there. And many have questioned the amalgamation of the Nigerian nations. Many have questioned the intention of these white men who did not consider the culture and the identity of these people before dividing them along their lines. Many also have pointed out the independence and the civilization that the empires, uh, I mean, we, you recall the Oyo Empire, the Bini Empire, the Fulani Emirates, whose um, governance, uh, uh, governance and leadership uh, way back before, before that amalgamation was experiencing a tremendous development that even the foreigners had to be amused and learn from. Uh, many are of the opinion that if empires, those empires were left, had been left to grow at their own pace, that Nigeria will not be where it is right now. But of course, there are other school of thoughts who believe that Nigeria has come to stay, irrespective of the differences. I mean, irrespective of um, the ethnic, the religious, and the language barriers. Many are saying that there's a lot that Nigeria needs to learn from the United States of America, who has indeed different ethnic nationalities coming together, one believing in America. And one good thing about that country is everybody sees himself first as an America before talking about his root, his ethnic or religious affiliation. That's the farfetch here in Nigeria. And of course, this centenary is one of those uh, things that inspired the ongoing national conference in Abuja. You recall 492 delegates from across Nigeria sitting to discuss so many issues except the dissolution and the dissolubility, if I can put it that way, of the Nigerian nation. And another challenge that we had this year is the crescendo that terrorism reached in Nigeria. It took a whole different dimension. The zenith of it was the abduction of the 276 girls in Chibok, Bornu State, just recently, the committee uh, that was um, organized by the presidency put the figure to 219. That again put Nigeria uh, at the center, at the signature of all eyes, and everyone, international media, started talking about uh, what transpired in Bornu. And we got a lot of help, a lot of um, international commitment. But as we speak now, over two months, two months afterwards, this girls are yet to be found. And just yesterday again, a ticket election, which um, the incumbent governor says about 10 international countries, uh, 10 countries are monitoring. As a matter of fact, the United States of America said that the success of this election has a lot to do, the success or otherwise, has a lot of impact on the forthcoming general election in Nigeria. It is no doubt a great a great time for us, a great time in the history of Nigeria. Most people are talking free, fair, credible election. We are waiting to hear the position of the opposition as well as the incumbent governor. And let me hint you, uh, there's a lot of reference to what happened in America during the Barack Obama election. Uh, and less than an hour after the results were counted, Mitt Romney was out to congratulate the winner of that election. More of that after this call. Dada, how are you today? I'm fine. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Call TV News. Please go ahead with your contribution. Yeah, I, want to, <clears throat> I want to congratulate the, the governor, the new governor elect, uh, Ayabini Farashi. Uh, despite of the military personnel on the ground in, in, in the state, uh, the election went well. The people came out very, very well in the market to vote and <clears throat> And the rest by the military, if you, if, you go, if you go to, if you are in Ando today, you see jubilation everywhere in the parks, 
you know, cattle riders everywhere in Ado. The regulation, if the regulation is weak, there will be no regulation for the town. The regulation is fair, it's fair and fair. Uh, what we what, what, what does want to tell the people of the people in government is that the people's power is bigger than anything. Uh, I just want to say, we want to, say, want to send our congratulations message to our new governor elect. Waiting. So, what, what I, just, I just want to thank your station. Your station was on ground fully uh, with, 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 with large coverage. They, they, they went around, they interviewed some of us at, at the parks, at, um, at, uh, at the, uh, the Fagi parks. We, we saw your guys on ground very well, being very well. I also want to say that you sent the message to other APC states that uh, and it's not by, 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 by one central body from above, it's by, 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 by division of the power to, to the people themselves. It's not by the militarized and um, authorized government by, 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 by some people somewhere, somewhere. Maybe one government that is, that is close to the masses. That's what, that's what, that's what will show them that we, we are on ground, we are on ground, we are we don't we done very well. There's no any there's no cost to alarm in Adelaide. Everywhere everybody's doing peacefully. The, the market has been open. People are going to their churches. Everywhere is peaceful. I think it's peaceful. We want to we congratulate you. We congratulate the new governor elect in waiting. Uh, yeah, our 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 heart goes to, to the accord party uh, candidate and our family is our is our is our is our own in Adelaide. Quite touching there that uh, you, you seem to have touched everywhere, congratulating everyone. And that's the spirit, that's the sportsmanship, that's the spirit of sportsmanship that many are talking about that we must imbibe in our politics in Nigeria. The fact that we can embrace one another, the fact that you are in the opposition doesn't mean that we are enemies and that we have to be on each other's thought every time. You saw what happened with Mitch Romney, who came out with a very inspiring speech congratulating Barack Obama and, um, I mean, extending that olive branch and saying that he was looking forward to work with him. And he said something that really touched me, that being the president of the United States comes with a lot of responsibility, and they are looking forward to him being successful in his tenure as Mr. President. Now, many people are saying that um, since the like election is following a relatively free, fair, and credible path, and many people are saying kudos to Anik. Many people are saying kudos to the structure and then the system. Then, indeed, it should also follow in that path of the spirit of sportsmanship so that people can come together and people are looking forward to coming together and saying, Well, although we lost but then we can work together we can show love we can show commitment and we can indeed tell that what is most important to us now isn't um, who won or who lost okay we're joined now by a correspondent in adoe kitty rashid rashid how are you today i'm good i'm good and you i am terrific what's the mood like in adoe kitty Yeah. 
scholarship to congratulate him mm -hmm. and in the next 24 hours I am going to invite him so that we are going to have a smooth transition process mm -hmm. and depends on how to move the KC forward. Mm -hmm. Rashid, Rashid, that, sound, that, sounds, that sounds more like what happened between Mitt Romney and Barack Obama in the United States. Okay. And it's... Uh, yes, mm. and, yes, and even this, as a matter of fact, um, had in attendance former Governor Sheikh Mouni, former Governor Atili Adebayo, which is giving us the impression that this is a kind of a unanimous agreement between this um, political um, stalwart as far as APC is concerned. Mm. Because he said further that if this has been the decision of the Kiki people, then so be it. Mm. That every one of them, be it Fayoshe and Fayemi, they are all sons and daughters of the Kiki. And they will all be working in tandem to move the Kiki forward. Mm. That is the word of Governor Fayemi. I think that is based on the background of what he him to consider it and even go as far as congratulating the governor elect. Wow, that is that is really inspiring for all of us here to hear that um, indeed Dr. Fayemi has congratulated Fayoshe as the governor elect of Ikiti. Uh, but um, beyond all of that, what do you, what exactly can you give us a picture of what is happening now on the streets of Ado Ikiti this Sunday morning? For the first time, we're going to have an election in AKT after uh, the very first one, uh, uh, after the very first one in 1999 that will not end up at the polls. Uh, Rashid, what do you think this portends for us, especially as we look forward to another one in Oshun State shortly? Thank you very much, Rashid Rashid, for your contribution on the show today. We are hoping to hear more from you uh, subsequently. Yeah. Do have a great time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it looks like um, the days of do-or-die politics in Nigeria 
are over and just before his call came in we were talking about what transpired at the united states of america and you heard it from our ado akt correspondent who says that dr kade Fahimi, the incumbent governor of akt state came out in the company of the former governor adini adibayo as well as um, a former governor shaguoni who recently defected to the apc congratulating ayodele fire she actually said that it's spoke with him earlier this morning congratulating him on the success of the polls and he's saying that in the next 24 hours he will be inviting him to the governor's house to discuss and talk about how they can together move Aki to stay to another level I am excited and you can see it on my face that this is happening in my time this is happening in my state this is happening in my country Nigeria and we are hopeful that this spirit of sport will have a ripple effect not only in southwestern Nigeria beyond Oshun State into the general election in 2015 and indeed we can say that we have politicians who are not only concerned about their pockets who are not only concerned about winning an election but who indeed have the heart for the people who have the heart for peace and I must say that fire me again has shown to be really indeed a gentleman who is mindful of the people of Ekiti State. He says that if this is the will and the wish of the people, so be it. And of course, that is exactly what we just heard from our correspondent Rashid Rashid live from Ado Ekiti. It's been a wonderful time here in our studios in Lagos. It's been a wonderful time in uh, across Nigeria. Everyone beyond Southwest um, following this Ekiti election. I would still love to hear more from you. Uh, call us coming in now it's patrick from Aba. how are you today patrick fine I'm, I'm hello yeah welcome to core tv news please go ahead with the contribution okay you know i have called before unfortunately the line is breathing that time so what i'm saying now is first of all let me congratulate uh, the doctor dr fire me for congratulating the child for winning the election mm. So one, that is the one question that we have been trying to ask people, which there is nobody is under because of the bridge of the line, about uh, the reflection of the next election of Oson and the next election that people not see. Exactly. You know, we Nigerians electoral, we have been wise. The problem of pro the problem in Nigeria is not the people, it's the politicians. Nigeria has no where to go. Nigeria knows who is deceiving them, who is not deceiving them. There is no way what you see that you can even reflect in us. Because in a, first of all, let me ask, does the election has no the rules? Like, uh, like uh, there is a, 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 a election campaign always stop about two days before election. What kind of rally are they doing on Friday against Saturday election? No, just yeah, a minute, Patrick. Elections, I mean, campaigns what are supposed to end 24 uh, hours before kind of election day. Amici, hello. Are you there? I'm hearing you. I'm here. Campaigns I'm here. are supposed I'm to end 24 you. hours before election day, not 48 hours. Okay, 24 hours. Twenty-four hours before election day. Exactly. Is it okay? That is the half right to hold uh, the to hold rally on Friday before before Saturday. No, they had right to host on Thursday. You know, the rally was on Thursday, not on Friday. On Thursday. Exactly. Okay. Anyway, we okay. Whether rally or no rally, they have almost they have up to three boons to have a rally, to make campaign. They have been doing campaign. That a day one cannot stop them winning the election. But what I'm saying in the sense is that the people of the city have spoken with their vote. Uh, uh, the vote there is not a nation is going to cast it, neither that we sure is going to cast it. People have spoken. And the people have, they, they, 
the incumbent governor and the, le the governor elect have already understand themselves. Mm. Let, uh, let Nigeria let ATC forge ahead. Let Nigeria forge ahead. And again, Nigeria has no where they are going because this uh, what has in uh, South East where we are. This uh, this uh, insurgents uh, people that they get the the army army traps and the other time in uh, near in uh, nearby rivers and uh, Abia. About three months ago, river people did not say anything. About a few weeks ago, a week ago, they get up to nine, 490 something people. And in which the, one of the kingpin of the um, uh, Boko Haram and the Indianese, and all of them are heading to river city. What picture is uh, he admitting is showing to Nigerians? So, what Nigerians have nowhere to go. Nigeria has no who is deceiving them, and who is not deceiving them. So they are, and we are seeing the short, we are seeing this as a controversial party. I'm not seeing any change. I'm not, they are not heading Nigeria to anywhere. Well, I, the, uh, uh, the other day we are watching we are screen, we are on screen. We are in the National Assembly are even fighting. In the in the river street, there is fighting also. Even in uh, uh, Adamawa, they are only fight. Why why is it that the, the governor cannot control their state? How they control Nigeria at large? They go in uh, the duty. You with the governor, we we hear that we've been fighting for the Boko Haram. Them themselves, they are not doing anything. They are not. We have already in Asia here. So just have captured more than 400 of them. Are they not from north, from north? Drive down to east here. They are not even doing anything. Neither they are fighting campaign on it. So we Nigeria, we are not, we know where we are going. The problem we face in this country is politicians, and we are That's we are right. still with them. We don't we don't mind how they how they picture the whole thing. It's all right. Thank you very much, Patrick, for your contribution. Great to hear from you. It's good to hear from you, Patrick. Thank you for calling. And I think that the big question here is um, what then, how do Nigerians react to the show of sportsmanship? We already had that Fire Me has congratulated Fire Shea and indeed is a very, very important. Oh, we have. Um, the, we have the governor elect speaking right now. Thank you. 
Right. Uh, 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 we just um, got a call there from the governor elect. I, oh, I think it's still on. Oh, beautiful that we just heard from the governor elect himself, Ayodele Fayoshe, speaking with us from Ado Ekiti. And he confirmed, he confirmed that um, the incumbent governor spoke with him earlier today in the morning and that um, they are hopefully going to meet tomorrow and show to the world that the remain brothers, that there is no winner and there is no loser in this election. This indeed is is possibly the first time we're seeing such show of sportsmanship between brothers in Ekiti. It's a good thing that is starting from Ekiti, and Ekiti people are showing that indeed Ekiti is the fountain of knowledge. You went ahead to say that it's not easy to be back after eight years of impeachment and wanting to go for governorship again, and he is saluting everyone, and he is saying a big thank you to the contenders within and outside the party he categorically said that Kayo De, Fayemi, as well as Bamidele Opayemi are my brothers. I have a call now from Wisdom. Wisdom again is calling from Edo. How are you today, Wisdom? I'm fine, thank you. I'm not going straight to the point. Hello? Go ahead, Wisdom. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. From the previous call, as well, Mr. Patrick, I called to concern you. You see, for stopping the comrade governor alone, for that matter, are you? Is there enough reason for me to support the election? Hello, are you with me, sir? I'm with you, Wisdom. Hello? I'm with you. Go ahead, please. Is there enough for me to support the election? Because that's a PDP, 
election, we have a mission for political party. That's a pretty big chronic, the ego, 2015 election. I'm, I'm facing a problem in this country, on 2015, because the Igbos were born in 2015 elections. In fact, now, we are by sided now. So who is fooling who? Let's try, let's not deceive ourselves. That Mr. Patrick is not that current with the political situation in this country. Now, as I'm talking to you now, PDP members, top men, according to the governor's report, we said sessions yesterday that some unforeseen person are inside the state. People that don't have any business with the state, we are there. So if I say governor, and I'm social media, they have business with that, that rally. They stop them, they delay them. Why? According to uh, Sagi this one in this situation, who stopped them? Who gave that authority, that order? Who gave them? Up to now, nobody. So who are we deceiving? Who is fooling you? That is my contribution. Well, thank you very much for your contribution. Wisdom calling us from Ekuma in the Do State, and he's saying that we should not sweep that. Uh, what happened prior to the election, the delay of governors uh, who were supposed to attend the mega APC rally, we should not sweep that under the carpet. But Wisdom, of course, we heard from Fire Me, and we already heard from Fire Shea, who happen to be the big contenders in this game, and they are saying that they are ready to sheath their sword and they're ready to forget the past as a matter of fact um, the governor elect said earlier that everyone who has been arrested or detained should be released that everyone who has lost something whose house has been burnt will be compensated and most importantly he said that he salutes and he respects the courage of the incumbent governor who called him earlier today to concede defeat and uh, appreciate and uh, congratulate him for winning the, the elections and of course he also affirmed that he will be meeting with the incumbent governor tomorrow what what a day what what a revelation that is baffling many and he went higher to say that he's older and he is wiser now and that as a brand new Ayodhili fire sheet just like Mr. President said that he's ready to work with everyone and um, he also he also appreciated everyone and everyone who has helped and who has um, uh, 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 supported him thus far earlier today he made mention that he dedicated the he's dedicating the win to the people of Ekiti state we have another caller now this is Femi Owulabi he is calling from Lagos. How are you today, Femi? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Welcome to Call TV News. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, I just want to comment on the APT election. All right. Um, this is just to uh, be a very big lesson to the leadership of uh, the APC that um, choosing a candidate for an election you must always have a popular candidate and somewhere that is a grassroots man so that anything that is happening within the stage you just have to be part of uh, the people because it is about the people and once you have a person that is granted with the people you always have because popularity has a role to contribute to winning elections anywhere in nigeria because the majority of the people that will be casting vote are people from the grassroots and it must be somebody that is with the people. This has shown that uh, Faroche is being loved by his people and is really grounded with his people. Uh, we kind of uh, enlist this uh, characteristics that uh, uh, Faroche possess. I really need him to be far from the people and they will believe that the people that the sovereignty of election is to the people. So that's my contribution. So this is a lesson. It's a very big lesson. And the uh, Osho is coming. 2015 is there. We should see candidates that are really grounded, that are grassroots politicians. These are people that can really win elections for the party, irrespective of whoever you are. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Femi. Good to hear from you. Your word is going to political parties and to look within intra-party to check out for people who are popular with their people, as well as them ensuring a free fair primary election at that level. Good time for us. Uh, one thing that um, Ayodhili Fire Shea, the governor-elect, said earlier while he was speaking with us uh, 
on the show he says four years is a very very short time as a governor and that you must be careful about the things you do and the decisions that you make he said he's older he is wiser now and he's ready to work with everyone we'd love to hear from you you you, you had you had them he confirming the fact that um, he is going to work hand in hand with everyone and this is not just mere talk he confirmed that Dr. Cardi Fiamy spoke with him earlier today to congratulate him and they are going to be meeting tomorrow. What a good time, what a good display of love, what a good display of showmanship, I mean sportmanship, and what a good display of um, integrity leadership as we see evolve in AKT. The much talked about June 21 governorship election AKT has come and gone, but then the memories will linger for so long another caller here Bolanle how are you today Bolanle hello, hello Bolanle hello good morning welcome to core TV news hello hello I can hear you please go ahead with the contribution okay I'm very happy to to get you this morning so I'm good. I'm congratulating Mr. Fayoshi for uh, electing him as the governor of the state now. And I want to tell you people that these people that I used to call and be saying uh, any uh, the negative thing or the positive result is those people that are working for another party. This is the first time I'm hearing it from APC members that after the election, they are governorship candidates congratulate the winning governor. And and if this can be able, it can be going on like this, Nigeria will be, I know Nigeria will go forward. And coming to Umoshu State election, the same thing that happened in the, yesterday we come back in Umoshu State because we, everybody knows these people did not perform and they did not do anything. They are the only people that are used to deceive Nigeria and that PTP want to read the election and they are the one reading the election. Look at the local government election we had in Lagos State in 2011. These people, the people that, the person that won the election and has been confirmed as won in Lagos State, they divide the result and give it to another person. And they continue to deceive people. So I'm, I'm happy for Fire Green now to congratulate his brother. And since two of them agreed to work together now, Thank you, thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Bolan That uh, everyone has a freedom to ease our own opinion. That opinion, of course, is Bolan and he's free to express himself and call TV news. But I think that our callers as well should follow suit in the spirit of sportsmanship and should be more civil and objective in their opinions. I mean, we saw we saw the big contenders already uh, showing love to each other and saying that we are friends, we will continue to be friends. And, and now, if you check the trend, prior to this time, just shut shortly before now the opposition party the apc had is congress and um, some some key office holders were elected and they are the very first chairman of the apc in the person of a past governor in edo oyego odige oyego and just immediately after that the People's Democratic Party came out to congratulate uh, congratulate his appointment as the chairman of the APC, and you can see that ripple effect. Uh, one minute PDP congratulated APC, another minute APC lost to PDP Nikita State, and then this continued train of congratulation, show of sports, sportsmanship is what we've always craved for. We talked about this yesterday, and it was like a dream yesterday, but it became our reality today that this can also happen in Africa where many people thought that we only have political leaders who wants to win election all the time who do not even want to leave office indeed AKT people and AKT leaders have shown the world proven the Western world wrong that good things can happen and come out of Africa. Now look at what transpired before this election. We saw a lot of the campaign take place. I'm going to tell you more about that after this call. This is Inne Mekha from Abba. Hello brother, how are you today? 
Go ahead, please. I can hear you. I want to congratulate the governor elect. Yeah, and to put my daughter, I see how the relation goes. We are Nigeria, we are Nigeria happy. We are Nigeria. We are, we are Nigeria happy, but I want to caution Patrick from Abba, telling him that he should not put issue of Boko Haram to party something. Hello? I'm with you. I'm with you. Go ahead. Different guys from Bukhara. Because this is a clear election. This is clear election in the state. That man, you know, that is talking about a piece of pretend. He's a stupid man by telling us like that. Let him come up everything concerned about party issues in this election that goes clear and fair. Thank you. All right, great to hear from you. Thank you so very much for your contribution. And that's our show today. Thank you so very much for watching. In case you missed out on it, I'm wondering where you've been, but you can always catch up with us on our social media feeds. Our Facebook, you know where it is. It's www.facebook.com forward slash core TV news. And you can also follow us on our Twitter handle at core TV news NG. Get to watch previous editions of our show and our news on YouTube, it's trendy and it's staring you right in the face on the screen. You've had it all. Yesterday, big D-Day for Ekiti people. Today, it has been crowned with a show of sportsmanship we had from Fire Me. And just earlier on, the governor-elect himself spoke with us live in the studio here where he said he got a call from the incumbent governor earlier today congratulating him and he promised to meet with him tomorrow and he is say, saying that there is no longer, no more fight, no more disconnect. This is time to work together because what is important now is not the political party that we are affiliated to. It's about the good and great people of Ekiti State. We can only hope that there will be a ripple effect from Ekiti to assure and our scores to the big one coming 2015. It's been a lovely time with us here. 2014, Ekiti elect were promised. We we delivered and we brought you all the live feeds all the way from the state capital at Doikiti to every single local government council where our reporters have been. That's what we do on Core TV News. And you can also join us tomorrow as we continue with our ultimate news and current affairs program, Core Digest. And it comes your way every morning from 8.30 there about to 11 o'clock. You do not want to miss it. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. Thanks for being there. And goodbye for now. Core TV News now provide a platform for live coverage of political rallies and electioneering campaign from anywhere in Nigeria. Political news stories, political editorial reviews, political discussions, personality profile, people's parliament from the national, state and local government assembly. Contact us now on 0803-471-8550 or 0803-724-9733. 01453 3407 A 24 hour news station